Hello and welcome to Marquee Story Reviews, the first of this new year. Last night I had a dream. It was grand, inspiring. So it just happens that last night I dreamed that I'm doing groceries and then I find toys in the ice cream freezer. Well, lo and behold, tonight I did groceries and I found toys in the toy aisle, not the ice cream freezer. So as these guys behind me attest to, I do collect Transformers. I do especially like the new Transformers Prime Cyberverse line. Uh, and I did find a few of these guys on the aisle. One of the figures I found was, uh, as it's called, Unicron Megatron, which would seem awesome. You can see the big guy himself just on the shelf behind me. But in fact, no, it was just a boring old repaint of this guy, which, spoilers! In the Transformers Prime movie, this guy, Megatron, did get, in fact, a remodel. Uh, um, didn't become Galvatron, as some would have hoped, but he still got uh, sort of a new mold, you could say, uh, which is pretty cool. But nope, just new colors on this guy, uh, which kind of harken back to the uh, Energon Armada, these, uh, these anime lines, uh, way back when, when Megatron would change forms, but would only get a slight repaint. Now, this is not to say repaints can't be cool. Look at this guy, for instance, from the Energon line. Um, so yeah, it's just good old Megatron from that line repainted to look like G1 Galvatron. Love that guy. But you know what? A guy has to draw a line somewhere. I mean, I mean, there's a limit to how long you can get away with just repainting a guy and just re-releasing him, uh, just pretending it's a new figure, a new character. I mean, I mean, it works in some instances, like with this guy here, obviously. So, so how would you guys feel if, for instance, I just got a new shiny purple shirt, got a clean shave, uh, came back basically pretending to be a new character and doing a new review. I mean, how ripped off would you feel? Hello. Do you feel ripped off yet? As for me, the only thing I care to rip off is your face. Give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me, baby. <laughs> So back to the topic at hand. You know how they say the only thing better than finding something you're looking for is finding something you're not looking for. Case in point. What we have here is Transformers Prime Commander Class Bludgeon. Before I saw this on the shelf, I was not even aware that they were making a Commander Class Bludgeon. As I saw it, I instantly thought that this figure is, for lack of a better word, freaking awesome. So let's have a look at the packaging. It's nothing remarkable, but first off we have tech specs. As you can see here, they do justice to the classic bludgeon. Very skilled warrior, not really strong, but quick, precise, and deadly. At the back of the card, a short biography along with Bludgeon in both his robot and vehicle modes. You will notice that he is actually patterned off of Commander Class Shockwave. That is Shockwave. No, no, not that Shockwave. This Shockwave. So with him out of packaging, you will notice that he is essentially the same as Commander Class Shockwave. Variations include the head and the chest area, which, if you look at the face, is a completely new sculpt, along with the chest that looks like a sort of skull, which in itself is a homage to this figure. Now what's remarkable is while it does emulate this figure here, mostly in terms of the chest area, the face is very much more reminiscent of Generation 1 Bludgeon. As you can see, very nice skull face. He does have a bit of an underbite, but nothing sinister. What is sinister is his cannon, and what we have here is a friction Missile, much the same as the one with Shockwave. So what you want to do is just push his cannon forward, like so, and poof. Befitting an undead samurai robot, he also comes with a rather sinister red sword. The color of blood. Which I wished actually had a spot to hook on, either on his side as a holster or on his back to be stored there somewhere. But as it is, it fits nicely in his hand, and it's a rather nice touch for this figure. There's also these very sinister spikes on his shoulders, which can be left out like this for a more shock wavy look, or you can stow them back the way they were. Now let's get down to the most sinister aspect of this figure, the transformation. And there you go, you have sort of tank bludgeon. So what's there to say about this toy? Well, it rolls 
quite nicely even though it does lack a bit of stability at the front these legs are not really pegged into anything they just sort of hold there which bothers me a bit so of course the cannon still functions if you care to put the missile in again and the one thing I really, really like about this mode really is the face. This might be a thing where your mileage will vary, uh, but for me I'm glad to finally see the skull face on Bludgeon's chest being put to good use. In this case it becomes sort of the face of the sort of tank, and you have this thing basically just jutting forward looking at you as this thing is, is advancing. These things are kind of like claws, I guess. On, uh, on front threads. So it's an original concept if nothing else. It does breed some new life into Shockwave's alt mode. Personally it's not an alt mode I do like very much. I do tend uh, to dislike these Cybertronian sort of jets or sort of tanks. But this is not too bad. Uh, now obviously this will remain on my shelf in robot mode. But still, so look at that. Very very nice effort. Just look at those red eye. The sculpt on this thing is rather impressive. Maybe you're not picking up as much as you should due to the red background. Let me just zoom this up a bit. Give you a glimpse of my beautiful, beautiful face. Here we go. And maybe you can see now a bit better. So very very impressive sculpt on this piece and if you look at it uh, the colors do work nice green nice orange and in fact if you look at it beside the other bludgeon which we have here it's not the exact same shade of green but it works same thing with the orange and I'm guessing the reason they went with shockwave as a basis for this figure uh, is probably because shockwave is the only thing resembling a tank in the Transformers Prime line so they thought hey why not and indeed the homage does work as I said it's not my favorite alt mode out of them all but you're going to be leaving this figure in robot mode most of the time so all in all what we have here is a very well put together figure as well as a very nice homage to generation 1 bludgeon now for the question you've all been waiting for does he make the cut well, of course he does. What do you think his sword is for? Philistines. So the face sculpt again really nice as you can see on both faces, actually both the chest and the actual face. You can really see uh, the samurai helmet, they're really really detailed. That said, he's far from perfect. Uh, you know, as I said, the transformation can get quite fiddly. I mean, at times you almost feel like taking a hammer to this guy just because it's so fiddly and overcomplicated for nothing. That's not to say it's actually complicated, it's just that it's, it's a lot of trouble for nothing, I find. Um, the alt mode, as I said, doesn't really hold together properly, nothing really pegs together on this guy, and uh, that kind of bugs me. But despite all of its faults, uh, despite the so-so alt mode, in my opinion, some dark part, some dark side of me really wants to love this guy, and you know what? The dark side is right. There's nothing sinister about it. Uh, you really should pick this guy up if you see him. And truth be told, he was really a neat surprise for me. Never expected to see this guy on the shelves. Uh, didn't even know he was going to get made. So, uh, really nice homage. And if you like Cyberverse, you should definitely pick this guy up. So this has been Marky the Maniac bringing you another toy review. Thank you for being there. And, and see you next time. He really was a nice surprise to me, never expected to see this guy on the shelves.